Hi everybody, Broken Ebs here. Welcome to today's video. So today's video uh, is kind of a response video to Andrew's video. Should we be using <coughs> antivirus on Linux? Okay, so <clears throat> let me try and clear a few things up for you. On Microsoft Windows, 99.9% .9 of users run the system as administrator with elevated privileges. Wow, that's a mouthful, isn't it? What does that mean? <clears throat> it means, in simple English, it's a relatively simple affair for malware or a virus to gain the necessary permissions to run and execute on that system without too much trouble. Whereas on Linux, you run as a user with limited privileges, which means it's very, very difficult for viruses or malware <clears throat> to gain the elevated permissions that it needs in order to successfully execute. So that's your first layer of protection. Now, if you were to do the same on Windows, if you ran your Microsoft Windows as a user, not an administrator, then your system would be pretty much as secure as Linux. Of course, that's not taking into account bugs and exploits within the operating system itself. However, on Linux, because you run as a limited user, it's very, very difficult for any virus or malware to get the privileges that it needs to successfully execute and infect your computer. However, that doesn't mean we should be complacent. So although your system is pretty darn safe and secure, other systems are not. So let's say I game with a friend. My system is MX Linux, as you can see. Their system is Microsoft Windows. What does that mean in the real world? It means that if you want to be a kind and considerate user, you would run an antivirus program on your Linux to protect your friend's computer. Remember, back in the day, we had an old saying, Intel inside, idiot outside. It's about protecting your computer from you, the user, the idiot, the fool. So Andrea has quite rightly pointed out there's a great program available for from Linux called Clam TK Antivirus. It's been around as long as I can remember Linux, and I can remember Linux a very long while. It's available uh, as a GUI called ClamTK, and this is the beast right here. ClamTK is a graphical front-end for Clam Antivirus. Fantastic. How do you get it? Well, dead easy. Go to your Synaptic Package Manager. <coughs> Excuse me. And do a simple search for Clam TK. Do not, I can't emphasize this enough, do not go trawling the internet for the latest Bitdefender, ESET antivirus, or anything else. Not necessary. Download and install this bad boy here, Clam TK. Graphical front end for Clam. It will also install the back end and all the dependencies required to run Clam antivirus. On your computer so if we're immune <laughs> on Linux from viruses why are you running an antivirus because I'm a kind considerate user so let's say me and said friend or said family member or said anybody remember they're on Windows I'm on Linux we're gaming together <clears throat> and I discover a wonderful program called Open Morrowind and Open Morrowind allows me to run Morrowind in an open source environment. Here we go. <clears throat> so I go ahead, download it, test it out. It's fantastic. And I say to said friend, all oh, you should do the same. Now I'm pretty much 
immune from viruses, malware, but not stupid idiot practices. And remember, this is all about being considerate, thoughtful and mindful. If that's not you, don't bother with antivirus. It's that simple. <clears throat> OK, so let's go ahead and let's find our clam TK. And here's the GUI, and it's a lovely little GUI. It's very simple, it's very basic, and it's very self-explanatory. So I'm not going to go through what all these things are in this video. I may do another video on that if you guys and girls request it. Back in the day, I used to rely as an IT professional on a professional product from a company called Sophos, and I'd heartily recommend Sophos. I also used to use another program back in the day which is free to use for 30 days called Hitman Pro which found just about every piece of malware known on the planet. However, you only need to consider using those products if you're a Windows user running in administrative mode. If you're not a Windows user, if you use Linux, there's no need to download and install anything externally just go to your repos and install ClamTK. Okay, let's go ahead and scan a directory. So we want to go to our downloads directory, open Morrowind, click OK, and that's it. There's nothing more to do. ClamTK will now <coughs> scan every single file within that directory. And if there are any suspicious files that are in there before you recommend this mod to a friend I heartily suggest you check out anything that's reported Clam TK is very very powerful in that it not only has its own virus signatures and knows you know everything from straightforward infected X's to PUPs you name it it knows it. But one of the powers of ClamTK is it allows you to submit any suspected files to just about every antivirus plant company on the planet and get their opinion on said file. Also, remember, if like me, you're running wine, then you're very wise to run ClamTK virus scanner. For although you can't really directly infect your Linux PC. You could gain an infection on your Wine PC, which is kind of a virtual Windows PC in a way, inside of Linux. And you could propagate said virus without any knowledge whatsoever. So those people who can't blanch say you don't need virus scanners on Linux. Well, the 50% right and 50% completely, utterly and uselessly wrong. So that's my 10 cents worth. I think it was a great video by Andrea to bring it to our attention. And I think it's great to remind everybody that although you might be on Linux and in a wonderful elevated pedestal laden world of computing in that the chances of you getting a really bad infection on your PC and getting your PC wrecked are slim to non-existent compared to a Windows user. It's always nice to be mindful of other users on other operating systems. Okay, so it's now completed that scan and as you can see, it's found a file Open PUA, win.packer, hmm. action taken, none. You can quarantine the file, delete it. My recommendation is to click the analysis tab and submit that file to um, every known antivirus company. And they're all there. They're absolutely all there. Submit the file, let them analyze the file and wait for your results. Now, already in doing this, that may be a false positive, which I'm sure it is, 
and there's nothing wrong with open Morrowind. But this is how stuff happens with people blindly trusting. It's a bit like, I've never met you, you've never met me. Let's say we met in the street and I say to you, if you lend me 50 quid now, I'll give it you back in 12 hours. Would you lend me the 50 quid? 99% of the time, absolutely not. Why? Because you don't trust me. So why would you blindly trust a computer operating system, a file, a program? Blindly trust. And people do. They don't sit there and think, well, what if? And of course, with people like me doing a ton of gaming on Linux, I do use a lot of Wine and a lot of Proton. So why should I blindly trust other untrusted mod suppliers? <laughs> you see where I'm going with this. You know, you can download a file off the internet totally innocently and bam, it's infected your computer. Why did you, bl well, you didn't blind, well, you did blindly trust, but because you wanted that mod so badly, you blindly trusted and went ahead. Even though alarm bells should be ringing, that you should scan and check anything that you download before you use it. How many people do? Virtually none. How many people have a safe, secure, tested, reliable backup of their system stored somewhere off the system that's been tested to a full restore? I can tell you now it's minuscule because nobody bothers. People are like water. They want the easiest path. And virus writers, hackers, exploiters, fishers, they all know this. But because the biggest operating system on the planet, bar none, whether you like it or low, that is Microsoft Windows, that's the, what the majority of hackers and virus writers write for. So I'm going to wait for the analysis on that file and we'll see under the results when it comes back, when all the companies have checked it. If it is a genuinely infected file or if it's a false positive. If any of you have got any questions, please do feel free to post them underneath the video. But I can 100% heartily back up Andrea's comment. Every Linux user out of courtesy should run a virus scanner to check files. It's not so much to protect your system, it's to protect other people and give them a little bit of courtesy that although they might be an absolute idiot user on their system, you're not. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, thumb the videos up or down. I will see you for another wicked Broken Ebes video.